Hello, boys and girls. Let's make stuff, huh? Um, so, this is my doorbell. <laughs> this is my deliveries doorbell. And, um, the, oh, Chris Carpenter, RocketBrandStudios.com. Ding! Okay, uh, this is by my front door. It has a sign around it. It's laser cut, and it says deliveries. So, when the UPS guy shows up, I get a doorbell. Well, I'm working on this whole shop project here, and uh, I thought it would be cool to include this in um, uh, in my software. So basically, my processing app and my big mega Arduino that runs everything. Um, if this could talk to that, it would be pretty cool, right? So, screwdriver. Stay with me there. Um, so the point is, um, let's hack this guy and see if we can pick up a signal from it that the Arduino can handle. Look at that. That was easy. Right, let me get that out of there. So, first lesson in hacking, find the screws. If you notice, the first thing I did, I took that label off. Uh, manufacturers like to hide screws under labels and under batteries. So, two screws out, and there we go. Bada boom, bada bang. So, this is probably my most obvious thing to go after is this speaker. Um, it produces different tones, but I think with a capacitor and a uh, transistor, I can probably catch it. But what I'm actually going to do is probably grab an oscilloscope and um, start probing, start hitting the button and probing different connections uh, to see if I can see a spike high and low when it gets a signal. And that's well, where I, you know, will tie in. Um, without an oscilloscope, uh, poor man's version, I would probably grab an LED and solder two wires onto an LED, connect one to ground, uh, like a 330 resistor, onto the other leg of the LED and I'd use that as a test probe to go through connections to see if anything lights up because usually you know kind of anything will light up a LED through a 330 resistor and I would use that as a probe to see um, as I push the button if anything goes high um, or if anything was high and goes low so um, let's plug some stuff in and we will see what we can do there alright so I have um, Fired up my oscilloscope. This is my little disco, which is, I think, an awesome scope. And uh, we'll go ahead and grab a ground here. I put batteries back into this guy. So we'll grab a ground here, and then we'll take our best guess. And this is probably going to be AC-ish, because it's a speaker. But we'll grab a probe there and see what we get. So I am going to fire up. I'll show you this in a second. Um, channel A on, channel A off. All right, there's regular noise. All right. Um, so right now I've got a little squiggly on my screen over here um, of just background noise. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the button and we'll see what we get on the uh, oscilloscope. Very little actually. Let me turn that down. Actually, I gotta show you something here. We have kind of a, uh, are we upside down? No, I think we're good. We have kind of a spike here. Okay, so there's the background noise right there. Do you see that? There's a little spiky spiky at the end there. Let's do it again. Watch this. The first you'll see is the sound, and then there's a high spike. Droop. And then it settles. That little droop, we might be able to catch that. That might be a good one there. Um, all right, let's see. I'm going to put you guys back here for a second, if you don't mind. All right. Um, all right, that was incredibly promising. Now, 
right next to this, I have a... I've got a whole bunch of transistors here. And I like transistors because they're like little switches. So, switches that are my switches. So my assumption is going to be that one of these transistors is probably going to click upon receiving a signal. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six transistors, which seven transistors that could possibly be it. So instead of wasting a bunch of time on video, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, basically, I'm going to click a probe. I'm going to I'm going to Google whatever I read on the transistors and figure out what their pinouts are. Um, if they're NPN or PNPs, and I'm going to figure out where the output is, where the ground is. And then I'm going to clip on to the whatever leg is the output, um, or the emitter or the collector, depending on... Well, actually, I'll probably click on to both, depending on how um, their wire, if it's NPN, I'll probably... Well, anyway, um, I'll probably go on to the a collector so I can feel it come to ground, because there's probably a pull-up on it. Um, the point is, my next step now, Googling, Googling, Googling. I'm going to Google all of these parts. I'm going to draw it all, on, all out on paper, uh, emitter-based collector, figure out what's what, and then I'm going to start cl clipping on each one, ringing the bell, and uh, watching my oscilloscope, see if I get a nice sharp drop or sharp high. Um, it's something that the um, Arduino can catch. Um, so that's next step. I'll do that and I will show you a shortened video of the fruits of my labors uh, after this clip. Alright, so I've played around with all the transistors and you can see I've got a clip on... Where am I? That guy right there. And we've got a trace going and you can see a little blip of negative. Um, but definitely low. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to hit the button and you'll see a bunch of high activity and it's almost two so it's a volt and a half almost two volts it's enough to probably catch uh, with an ADC so the next step for me is connect some little jumpers here and uh, plug into a Arduino and uh, see if we can see what that looks like um, via ADC and see if it's a signal that we can catch. All right, so I've got some little test leads clipped in there to that transistor I think is um, uh, uh, has potential. <laughs> I've uh, grabbed the ground here and an ADC channel. <clears throat> And as you see here, my numbers are flying by on my ADC. So, uh, sitting, sitting, well, about the midpoint there. And then every once in a while, you'll see a, a skip down to ground. But if you notice, when I hit the button, wicked low, back to 500 something. See that? That right there is something I can grab. No problem. Five, seven, seven, eight. Wicked low numbers. That's something I can grab. So the next step, um, now that I've got my ADC numbers coming from the uh, Arduino, is, um, which again, <clears throat> just an analog input, spitting out numbers. Um, the next step is to uh, write a little code to uh, blink, um, you know, LED 13, pin 13, um, when this click has been acknowledged. So we will see that in a second. All right, so uh, through a little trial and error, I've basically discovered that an analog read um, using a pull-up resistor on the analog pin uh, it turns out that when I hit the button the uh, the pin drops as an analog reading drops below about 30 uh, it drops about 27 or 26 so 
Um, actually, and here's the serial command that I was using to check my numbers. We can make that go away. So in essence, what we've got now is uh, a variable x equals analog read. And if that reading is less than 35, go ahead and blink LED, LED 13 uh, two times. And uh, let's see what we got. So again, uh, uh, doorbell thingy, wires, wires, ground, ADC channel, and, um, and then LED 13 is right there at the USB. So if I hit this, There's the four blinks out of the LED. Let's do it again. Yeah, I'll move it here. Ready? And there you go. I have successfully hacked my doorbell. I'll just solder some connections onto these hard wires and then run them out as connections. Uh, directly to my, my Arduino. And I know that basically, based on the transistor I found that drops low or goes high when the button is pushed. And I can read that change via an analog signal. Whenever it drops below 35, I know the button has been pushed. And this chunk of stuff, you know, minus the blinky, um, is incredibly easily added to, you know, whatever the rest of my code is. So there you go. A uh, successful hack in three video clips, four video clips, however many it was of a electronic doorbell. Um, again, solder those for real, turn them into prettier jumpers, a little more solidified into there. Um, I'll take this chunk of code, I'll, you know, jink it down into like a subroutine um, where I can just go to it within other code, you know, go check the doorbell and come back. And, uh, but for all intents and purposes, um, there's your proof of concept. Hit the button and 13 blinks. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is hacking. That's how you figure it out. That's how you do it. One more. Blinky, blinky, blinky. Tingy, tingy, tingy. Ding. All right. I think we're come, we've come full circle now. Um, we've got the doorbell hacked figured out the transistor we like. We've connected that to the Arduino. We've done a reading of the analog uh, signal going up and down. Figured out what the threshold is. We've blinked uh, LED 13 um, as a proof of concept to show that, that pin has been triggered. Now I've simply changed uh, pinouts to reflect the connection going to the big old tower of light. So it actually goes up to those uh, little relays up there. And uh, ta -ta -ting! let's see. Ha <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> now, tell me that isn't just a beautiful thing. Here it is at an LED level. And if I can kind of get everything in frame here, maybe if I go back far enough. Look up top, you can see the LEDs. feeling you're running out of batteries, Mr. Remote. So, at any rate, um, <sighs> there we go. Um, my little tower of lights. Um, I'll probably go from red to blue. But basically, um, UPS guy can hit the button. Arduino catches it. Processing um, can, you know, the processing sketch can do the text of speech and Christopher, a package is ready for you. Christopher, the doorbell is rang, whatever, as I simultaneously get a 
um, blinky light. Pretty cool, eh? There you go. Start to finish. Hacking a thing. Oh, wicka wicka ting!